Alright, welcome back friends. So today we're gonna find out why it took me three years to finish this painting. I'm gonna walk you through the whole process and along the way we're not only gonna learn something about oil painting but hopefully also get a glimpse into the mind of an artist. But before we get started, a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Websites, online stores, marketing tools, analytics, Squarespace is the go-to all-in-one platform if you want to create yourself a beautiful website. This little painting of one of my favorite movie characters started almost exactly three years ago. As a matter of fact, the footage you are currently looking at and the first part of the painting process was recorded in 2016. It was only after I had painted the small study of Peter Bankman a few weeks ago that I was reminded of this unfinished painting that was laying around in my studio. And surprisingly, I even started recording the process in 2016 and I still had the footage. So I thought to myself, why not go back and finish it? With Peter Venkman, I have already painted one of my all-time favorite movie characters. So I thought I might as well finish another one. And that is no other than Marty McFly. Now, this would normally be the part where I start a long monologue about Back to the Future, what a masterpiece it is, how well it holds up even decades after its cinematic release and how much it means to me personally. But that would go far beyond the scope of this video. Suffice it to say that this is really one of my absolute favorite movies that I go back to rewatch every year. As you can see, this painting starts out a bit different from the other portrait studies I've done recently. Instead of focusing on any one area, I start this painting by dividing it up into a dark and a light part. This has in part to do with the reference, but also the way I used to paint years ago. This way of painting lets you focus on creating volume at the beginning of the process. It is very similar to a sculptor, who starts his sculpture by shaping the rough form before going on to sculpt any details. Starting this way comes with its own set of challenges, but as you will see, it's actually not that important, because the final result won't look any different from my other paintings. So, after having painted the face, I go on to paint his iconic vest and jacket before going back to adjust some of the features of the face. Fast forward three years and the painting is back on the easel to finally get finished. And the first thing I do is I go back to rework the eyes. In the first painting session I wasn't very accurate with the shadow colors. So one thing that I especially pay attention to is the subtle variations in the shadow side of the face. And after that it's all just a matter of pushing paint around and making adjustments until I'm more or less happy with the face and ready to paint the background. Since I liked the way the figure contrasted against the white of the background, I decided to paint the background white. But having a white background always comes with the risk of making your paintings look unfinished. So to avoid that, what I decided to do is to paint a brownish halo around the figure before I start to paint the white background. And the reason I do this is not only because I know that some of it will shine through in the end, but also some of the brown paint will mix with the white during the process and give the background a bit more variation in color and therefore vibrancy. And after that, it's finally time to introduce the background and some abstractions. And while we do that, I want to quickly thank today's video sponsor Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for my own online portfolio for years now. So when Squarespace recently reached out to sponsor the channel, it was an absolute no-brainer. If you're an artist today, having a great online portfolio is a must. And Squarespace is perfect for that. But Squarespace also offers an integrated commerce and shop system. And that has made my life so much easier in recent years, I can't even begin to tell you. Launching products and processing orders couldn't be easier. So if you are looking to make your own website or want to have a great but easy to manage online store, then check out squarespace.com for a free trial or go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% of your first purchase for a website or domain. After having painted the background, I go back to rework the face. Tiny adjustments here and there to capture even more of the likeness or emphasize the overall expression of the face. 
And after having done that, what follows is me going back and forth between destroying parts of the painting and repainting them. And that only to end up at pretty much the same spot where this vicious cycle started. But that's the way it sometimes goes. Funnily enough, sometimes you have to see some of the other options before you can appreciate the one you already have. But the real question is, why did it take me three years to finish this painting? It's not like I stopped painting or that this was a particularly hard painting to finish. I mean, the second painting session only took me a few hours. The real answer is that I just had lost interest in it. And not the painting or the subject in and of itself, but more the process. After the first painting session, my initial spark of inspiration and my excitement for this painting were gone. And you see, when you start a painting on a white canvas, there are endless possibilities. But with each brush stroke, these possibilities become less and less. And at some point during the process, you find yourself in a position where a lot of the things that follow become very predictable. And at that point, painting often becomes execution rather than exploration. I mean, it's hard to get surprised by the final painting and the result when you're just one brush stroke away from finishing your painting, right? At that point, you can already anticipate how the final result will look like. So at the time, I decided to put it aside knowing that I would sooner or later come back to it anyway. And as you can see, I did. It took me three years, but that doesn't really matter, does it? It's not like I was lazy or unproductive in the meantime. And I have dozens of unfinished paintings that are only waiting for me to come back and finish them with a fresh pair of eyes and a new spark of inspiration. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that it's perfectly okay to not be inspired and to not finish a particular piece or body of work. Just set it aside and let time do its thing. If you're not working for clients or against deadlines, that is. In those cases, of course you have to just sit down and get the job done. But whenever you can, whenever you work on something that is primarily for yourself, don't be afraid to start things on a whim and lose interest or get distracted or throw it away. As a matter of fact, do it whenever you can. Because, I mean, that's also what children do all the time, right? And they are the happiest people in the world. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this short video to an end. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and yeah, have a good one.